Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we will be finishing up the low ride pumpkin. We've got a few bits to do, nothing major, but it is going to involve some soldering. We're going to use a soldering gun, 200 watts, which makes life a lot easier when soldering the larger wires. Some solder. I'm going to try and clear some of the solder with some wick, but this stuff's a bit on the thin side. We've got some nice silicon insulated wire. We're not building a fire breathing monster here, so 16 AWG will do the job just fine. Our goal is to make the motor wires run neatly from the ESC to the motor. Currently they're just a little bit short and there's a good chance they're going to rub the wheel. We'll need to remove the ESC from the chassis. It's only stuck in with a kit double sided tape. You can ease it off with a flat blade screwdriver. A nice blunt one is ideal so we don't mark up the plastic. All the connectors can get unplugged and the switch removed. Peel off the old tape and we're ready to mod. The terminals on the ESC, a Hobby King XCAR 45 amp, are marked A and B. It doesn't really matter what colour the wires are, you could do them both the same. It makes no difference. First job is to remove the stock wires. The biggest trick is getting the ESC in a position where you can tension the wires to pull them out, while simultaneously holding the ESC and the soldering gun. OK, warm up the gun, which should only take a couple of seconds. Tin the tip, put some tension on the wire and apply some heat. After a couple of seconds the joint should melt and the wire slide out. Same with the other one, which leaves us with a couple of nice bits of wire for the scrap box. And I'm sure one day they're going to come in handy, along with all the other ones. Next we need to clear the holes in the PCB. I'm going to try some of this solder wick. It's a bit thin, but it might just do it. Solder wick is just a copper braid with flux in it. It sucks up the solder, in theory clearing the pads and holes. This one works a treat for chips and surface mount parts, but I think it's going to be a bit much here. All we do is pop the wick on the solder and heat it up. Well, it's cleared off some of the solder. It's kind of level with the surface now. Oh well, not a complete loss though. It'll make it a bit less messy to use the old solder sucker. All we do is heat up the solder, put the tip of the sucker over it and hit the button. A spring-loaded piston makes a vacuum and sucks up the molten solder. Simple enough. The downside though is they tend to leave little bits of solder behind which could get in under the heatsink causing us some problems. But I think we got away with it. We got two nice clean holes. Now we just strip some insulation from the wires. Gently rolling them under a fairly sharp blade works well. The trick is not to press so hard you cut into the strands. Twist the ends nice and tight and thoroughly tin them. The bare ends are a bit long at the moment so we need to clip off the excess. You only need the wire to stick out a millimetre or so just to make the soldering that little bit easier. And now another dexterity test. We need to hold the ESC down, keep the wire in position, feed the solder and hold the soldering gun. It's a bit of a faff, but once you've found a good position, all we need to do is heat up the joint and feed in a little bit of solder. With the big gun it's really easy, it'll melt the joint very quickly, getting good flow. And that's the ESC ready to fit. We've still got really long wires, but we'll trim them up when we route them on the chassis. Servo next. The one fitted is a fairly nice Metal Gear cheapy one. Works a treat for off-road trucks, but it does have a bit of a dead band that makes driving in a straight line a bit of a pain. To replace it, I've got a Futaba S3003. A good match for a little on-road chassis. This one spent its life in a 40 size trainer running the elevator, so it'll still be in good condition for the steering here. You have to watch out with the old S3003s, there's a vast amount of rather ropey fakes. Buy direct from a model shop to be fairly sure you'll get a real Futaba one. Since this was a kit, and there's a fairly good chance you watched the previous videos, I won't go into massive detail. Just remove all the screws, pop off the servo saver, and feed the wiring through the hole in the chassis, only to find the receiver gets in the way. OK, so remove the receiver. Then feed the wires through the chassis to liberate the servo. Here's the two servos. Both are what's normally called standard size. Both have the same futile splines. The only difference for fitting are the closed holes on the lugs. They do make it a little bit more fiddly to fit the little mounting plate. Now we just need to feed the wire back through the chassis and fit all the mounting screws. Before fitting the servo saver, we need to make sure the servo is centered. 
You can use the radio for this, making sure all the trims are in the centre, or if you've got a servo tester, plug it in and set it to 1500 microseconds. While it's still powered, pop the servo saver on and fit the screw. We've got a plastic gear now, so we need to use a self-tapping screw. One of the ones supplied in the pumpkin kit should fit. Now the steering's working, we can start refitting all the other electronics. This time though, we need to consider where the wiring goes. There's a little bit of space around the edge of the radio tray, and with some careful bending and stuffing, we can get most of the excess wire down there out the way. When the receiver goes in, with a bit of fresh servo tape, it'll hold it down for a nice neat install. ESC next, we need to fit it so the motor wires get a nice path to the motor. There's very little space between the chassis and the bed of the body, and we need to make sure that they're not going to get caught up in the wheels. And of course, we need a little bit of space to stuff all the excess wiring. When you've got a plan, stick the ESC down with some servo tape and get to packing the wires. The switch can run around the ESC, get stuck to the chassis near the antenna mount with some more servo tape. The servo wire will fit in the gap between the ESC and the receiver, but to make sure it's not going to spring out, we can fold it and wrap it with a zip tie. There we go. Could be a little bit neater, but it'll do the job. Nothing's going to fall out or get caught where it shouldn't. The motor wires want to be as short as we can make them, but there's a trade-off. If we run on the shortest route, they'll foul the suspension and more than likely rub on the tyre. Not good. Going the other side of the body mounts, the wires lie neatly and most of all are well clear of all the moving parts. Perfect. So we don't melt the tyre with the soldering gun, we might as well remove the wheel. We still need to glue the tyres, so they're all going to have to come off anyway. First, we need to remove the stock wires. The yellow one has some heat shrink over the terminal. It just needs a little slice with a knife and it will peel straight off. Removing the wires is really easy. Heat up the joint with a little bit of fresh solder and the wires will just come away. We use the fresh solder as it's got a flux core, which will help get the joint to flow nicely. Now we know how long the wires need to be, we can trim them to length. But we don't know which way round they're going to go yet, so I'll trim them both so they'll both reach the furthest terminal. Strip some insulation and tin the ends, just like we did earlier. Solder the wires to the motor. Again, like the ESC, having a soldering gun with a bit of oomph does make life that a bit easier. We've burnt through all the flux on the bottom terminal. You can see a little spike on the joint. We're going to need to sort that, but first a quick test. Pulling the trigger should make the axle spin forwards, but it doesn't. OK, one more test. Pushing the trigger away should be the brakes and pushing it away again should be reverse, and it is. So the channel reverse on the transmitter is set correctly, but the motor is wired up backwards. What we need to do is swap the wires around. The solder on the lower terminal is still a bit plastic. No worries though, a bit of extra flux will do the job. This is a flux pen, usually used for surface mount soldering. Better would be a spot of flux paste from a tub, but mine's in the garage and it's raining, so the flux pen is going to have to do. We don't need much, just a smear. Reheat the joint and we've got a nice glossy smooth bit of solder. Much better. Now we can trim the yellow wire to just the right length. Strip and tin the end and solder it to the upper terminal. Nice and tidy. A quick test. And yeah, we're going the right way. Great stuff. We've got one more thing to do before we can actually run the truck. We need to glue the tyres. You can get proper tyre glues, but I much prefer using thin sino. It's the same stuff, more or less, just thinner. You have to be extremely careful with it, it's like water. It's amazing how easily it finds skin if you give it the opportunity. Grab a wheel and peel the tyre back from the bead. Apply some Sino, just enough that it starts to run around the bead. Too much and it will make a mess of your hands and the sidewalls. Too little and you'll have dry spots. If your hands are big enough, grip the tyre and massage it a bit until it's fully seated. Hold it a few more seconds and put it to one side to dry. Glue up all four tyres, give them 10 minutes to dry out and repeat on the other side. It's tempting to fit them right away, but to save sticking things where you don't want to, just give them another 10 minutes. Refit the wheels, remembering the S grips go at the back, and we've got a working chassis. A very quiet chassis. No notches, clicks or groans. Perfect. OK, body on, and I think we're ready to give it a bit of a run. Well, here we are at the smoothest bit of tarmac I have within five miles. It's not too bad, but the small wheels and no damping does kind of show up the rough bits. 
I'm not going to show too much of it running now. I want to have it side by side with the Midnight Pumpkin once we've got that running. Should be a fun video. Anyway, the MO6, even with the heavy body, does remarkably well. The ground's a bit damp, yet it's all but impossible to make it spin out. It does understeer a bit, but it's perfectly manageable. Much better than I was expecting. The speed isn't too bad either. Without dampers, it's probably as fast as you'd want to go. You can hear the chassis smack the ground over the bumps, which isn't so good. A cheap set of dampers will sort that out though, and we can add a little bit more power. I've got a Tamiya Torque tuned that will give it a little boost. 25 turn versus the stock 27 as far as I know. And that's about it, that's the stock build complete. And to be honest, I'm trying to justify another M06 with a polycarbonate body and a brushless motor. But I can't imagine you'd want to watch another M06 build. Next week I should be at the London Model Engineering Expo, so there will probably be a video from there. Then it's on to the 1987 Midnight Pumpkin. So, if you like the video, do please leave a like. If you've got something to say, leave a comment. And if you're not already, why not subscribe? Thanks for watching. Bye guys.